Last night, we saw Tioga punch a ticket to the semifinal in Rochester next week in Class D. So in Class B, the Spartans were looking for win 49 and a ticket to the semis. We go to the first quarter between Maine Enwell and Homer. Homer gets on the board early. Drew Cottle to Jaden Godivia for the 40-plus yard touchdown score to take a 7-0 lead. They're looking sweet like Godiva chocolates. Mm -mm, I love those. Spartans do work in a second. The ever-so-talented Michael Palmer taking the punt number one who well, guess what return it to the house and we'd be tied at seven apiece look at this kid's footwork can he do everything mvp last week and he might be the mvp this week scoring to tie up the game now i can't believe this but field goal kicking has been a major in this postseason trojans joel christopher would be called on to hit a 27 yarder for the 10 to 7 lead yeah i know it's like i can't believe it's not butter delicious stuff that's a third quarter. So we go still to the third quarter, and Emmy would be running their game and stepping it up. Cordell Wolfer with the one yard score to take a 14 to 10 lead. Look at that truck style and that effort. It's just like Sparta in the house. Two point conversion, good right there. Then in the fourth, Kyle Ballmer will be the key to this game. He had a huge rushing attack. Keeper on the QB option. He's into the end zone for the score. It's a 20 to 10 ball game after no PAT. That was good. And the dip, defense proving large at the end of the game. That big guy, Michael Palmer, number one. The big quarterback in the secondary with the pick. Kyle Ballmer would score again. He had 138 yards rushing, few scores. Spartans advance 27-10. I think it was I think it was pretty big because we we were kind of low. Our morales were definitely a little low, and then they spiked up, and as soon as they spiked up, we we stepped up to another level and turned on the old main animal that we know. Uh, we tried to, uh, you know, I think regroup and, and try to put the things in place that we have been doing over the last couple of years, um, you know, and, and see what they do, get the feedback from the kids and, and um, you know, the other coaches and uh, try to put something together that works for us. And, you know, we, we did a couple of things a little bit differently in the second half and uh, seen the workout pretty good. So now it's time to go for number 50 next week in Rochester. I will be there with all the coverage. The Class C, the first game of the day, Shenango Forks and Utica Notre Dame. Let's go to the first where it's my boy, Jackie Football, doing his thing as the coin toss would happen and the Spartan and the Blue Devils would take the ball. And it would be Jackie Football keeping the ball on the option. 18 yards for the score, two point conversion. Good, eight to nothing CF. And let's show some of that defense. Defense. LJ Watson doing work in the secondary, picking the pass off and doing a load of laundry on this two spin and cycle here to do a 44 five yard run into the end zone. 15 to nothing. Good guys in white. Man, I wish I could have him do my laundry. Next in the first, next Utica drive on fourth and four. Warmack fumbles the ball, bad snap. Ryan Bronson picks it up and takes it all the way in for the score. Forks advances to the semifinal with a very big 57-14 win over the Jugglers. Um, you know, we're going to party maybe, well, not party, but we're going to have a good time for one day. And then, you know, come Monday, we're going to hit it hard, hit practice hard, and we're just going to be focused. I mean, let's face it, it's, uh, you know, we, we want them to enjoy it, but it's always, it's just short-lived. Uh, you know, come Monday, we're, uh, we are ready, we are ready to roll again, and, uh, you know, a lot of preparation tomorrow as well, but uh, they got like one day to enjoy it, and then we're back at it. Yeah, this is their second straight go at it in the semis in Rochester. And again, I will be out west to give you all the action. 